Well, Madiba's birthday, the former South African president turns 93. To what extent can we put a value to the brand that is Nelson Mandela? One would assume any monetary value would be very hard uh, to actually derive. You're absolutely right. You know, we say that you can only put a value on a brand if that brand is sustainable. And sadly, human beings are not. Um, so this is where we would say no. Um, you can actually equate him a bit like a star as a person, um, a personality, because they do add all sorts of other forms of value and equity, as it were, to South Africa. We can bask in uh, his famousness. Um, but to actually put a, a value on him, uh, and the word I've used before is priceless. He yeah. is, to me, totally priceless. You know, we go through periods of the world where there are no giants on the world stage. Here we have one and he's homegrown and he lives amongst us. So I think it's a source of great pride for all of us. Absolutely. I mean, uh, nevertheless, we had, you know, Brand Mandela, a label uh, that a Mandela attorney once estimated was only second to the Coca-Cola brand uh, out there. How do you evaluate his status as a brand in an international arena? In an at international level, you look around the world at how well known is he? Uh, how is he perceived? How is he thought of? How long has he been around? And we know that answer exactly. How much longer will he be around? Mm -hmm. And that's always a problem for a brand. So there are certain ways that we can actually look at it. We actually have a, a matrix that we use which we call the brand strength. And if you go and look at all the soft issues, he rates very, very highly there. And as you said, against Coca-Cola, they're the two best known icons in the world, according to some st studies. There are soft issues that have immense sway when it comes to investor sentiment. I mean, he's been invaluable for South Africa, as you said earlier, you know, in terms of investment, politics, tourism, goodwill and the like. And uh, possibly, you know, South Africa's hosting of the 2010 FIFA World Cup would stand as a testament to that. I think so. Mm -hmm. In all these uh, almost competitions to host global events, competition is absolutely intense. It's a bit like a 100-meter race. You know, often the top six guys are within a couple of centimeters of each other. But the Mediba added value is huge, and that, I think, often makes the difference, uh, as it did, I think, in our bid for 2010. Well, in that light, to what extent have we seen abuse of that brand come to the fore, and how can we mitigate against that? I mean, how do you control the value that uh, you know of an icon like this and protect the brand that is? With great difficulty. Um, the thing about a brand is it's usually registered in law and ownership is through trademarks. Uh, and there was a little bit of a hiccup a few years ago uh, when Madiba's name was being used too freely in works of art and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but I think since then things have been tied up pretty well. Um, but there are the various aspects. You know, is it his name? And which name? Because he has various names. Is it his face? Uh, is it the shirts he uses? There are audio brands as well, even his voice. Uh, you know, some comedians used to mimic his cough, and they did it in jest, but in love as well. Uh, there are so many aspects to a brand, and all of these have to be registered. Of course, uh, you know, it's hard to... Uh to prevent commercialization of something like this where you know internationally everyone seems to want a piece of him you know a little bit of memorabilia here and there do you think that we run at risk of commercializing the Mandela brand always mm -hmm. there's always that risk and and who owns the various trademarks now often with an organization like the foundation I believe they own most of the trademarks but perhaps not all and this is where you want to make sure everything is in one place everything is organized and that way you make sure that if um, loopholes emerge over time, you block them off straight away. But you're quite right. There are people all around the world, they want a bit of him. Is it necessarily a bad thing? I mean, you know, it's, it seems like a pretty fine line uh, to be treading here, you know, uh, whether it is good or bad to see this commercialization of such an icon. Well, there's always the saying, beware the company you keep. And I think in his case, so many people want to be part of him. But what does he add to them? He adds integrity, humility, all his values. Uh, whereas some of those people who want to be with him don't, in fact, have those values. Of course, that comes to, you know, when it comes to protection of the brand. What about management of a brand like this? I mean, uh, very recently there was lack of clarity concerning Mr. Mandela's uh, health care and, uh, you know, the scare that we had earlier this year. It was described as a complete muddle and quite a row ensued over who was responsible for that public relations disaster. How do you manage a brand like that? Again, the bigger the brand, the more difficult it is. And that's where any major brand 
the miracle of that brand is how it's managed seamlessly around the world. Mm -hmm. And Nelson Mandela is a global brand. It has to be managed in the same way. So one would hope that there are brand managers, marketers involved in the team who look after him. Now even someone like David Beckham, a footballer, has a team of five, I believe, full-time looking after him. And I hope Mr. Mandela has the same sort of expertise.